firstly on the economy and what would happen if we actually left. The Leave campaign have said absolutely nothing to the British people and what they have said about leaving is fundamentally dishonest and it's dishonest about the cost of Europe. And on the subject that they've veered towards having lost the economic argument of immigration, I think their campaign is verging on the squalid and I have said so before and I'm happy to say so again. Um, is it not possible that these are thoroughly honourable men <coughs> who have taken a big political risk, risked their own political reputations, their own political futures, and standing for something they fundamentally believe in and which is agreed with by a huge number of British people, that these are the good I, guys? I, I have no doubt that there are many people in this country, including members of the Leave campaign, who thoroughly believe what they say. I've never questioned that. Though I must say, in Boris's case, it was a rather late conversion. I don't know whether he had a day trip to Damascus and came back, but until the very last moment, everyone thought he was in favour of staying. But he's made up his mind, and I respect that. But I think what they have done now they have begun the campaign is to feed out to the British people a whole galaxy of inaccurate and, frankly, untrue information. And what they have not done is tell us what would be the position if we were to vote to leave. I think it would be chaotic and damaging, and I think the people who would suffer most would be the ordinary, everyday man and woman in the street. And they need to tell us, if they wish us to leave, what it would be like and well, how they would then meet some of the objectives they've set they up. They say this morning an extra 300,000 jobs would be created because we'd be free to strike our own trade deals with America and Australia and China and other countries. Well, it's fantasy. Uh, firstly, we have something like 3 million jobs connected. I'm not saying they're wholly reliant, but connected to our present trade with Europe and essentially with the single market. I gather their current policy today is that they will leave the single market. There would also be a socking great hole, according to every commentator, in our public finances. Mm. So these promises of expenditure on the National Health Service or elsewhere are frankly fatuous. They are a deceit. We would lose a huge amount in terms of national income through trade, the small businesses who sell their goods to Europe, who would sell less because if we left the single market, we would face a tariff barrier of probably around 10%. Mm. So we would sell less, people would lose their jobs, we would find ourselves in a much worse position. And the Leave campaign can turn to no serious organisation who believes what they have said about the economy and about the future of Britain and the single market. So to be clear, you're saying this is a deceitful campaign to call a spade a spade. Are you saying that Boris Johnson is lying? I'm not personalising this, though I do find it very difficult to understand how Boris can justify the 350 million that he has on his battle bus, that he and Michael Gove in particular have defended time and again. You know, I know, the IFS knows, everyone knows, Boris knows, that the real net amount that we send to Europe is about one third of that. After the rebate and after the money paid back to our fishermen, to our farmers, to our researchers, the amount we send to Europe is about one third of the amount that they claim. Now, if they can't be straightforward and honest on a clear cut matter of fact like that, upon what else can we trust them? You keep using words like straightforward, honest, deceitful, and yet you say you're not personalising it. You are accusing these I'm people talking, of lying. I'm talking of the Leave campaign. I'm not necessarily talking of individuals. But, but we, they, well, but I'll, they are, I'll, I'll all tell part you the same exactly. Thing. I think throughout the whole of my political life, People have regarded me as being guilty of understatement. I am angry at the way the British people are being misled. This is much more important than a general election. This is going to affect people, their livelihoods, their future, for a very long time to come. And if they are given honest, straightforward facts and they decide to leave, then that is the decision the British people take. But if they decide to leave on the basis of inaccurate information, inaccurate information known to be inaccurate, then I regard that as deceitful. Now, I may be wrong, but that is how I see their campaign. And this is so important. For once, I'm not prepared to give the benefit of the doubt to other people. I'm going to say exactly what I think. And I think this is a deceitful campaign. And in terms of what they're saying about immigration, well, a really depressing and awful campaign. They are misleading people to an extraordinary extent. But the point that really angers me is the utterly false suggestion, repeated more than once, not in a single 
offhand remark, but in scripted, carefully prepared speeches, that we face the risk of 88 million Turks yes. coming here. Now, firstly, Turkey are not in the European Union. They are unlikely to be in the European Union in the next decade or two. And in any event, is it seriously suggested, as they do, that all 88 million Turks would come well, here? Well, apparently, let's... apparently, for our higher national living wage. On the one hand, they say migrants are depressing wages, and on the other, people are flooding in to get our higher well, national wage. It's let, nonsense. Let's be clear, Sir John. Nonsense I mean, on stilts. The, the EU wants Turkey to join. The British government wants Turkey to join. The Prime Minister has said he would pave the way from Brussels to Ankara. So this is not a complete fantasy. Use, it's no, quite no, possible. No, no, and this no, no, choice, no, it this, this election, this, this decision, could be with us for 20 or 30 or 50 years' time. During that period, the I Turks you, have Turkey been negotiating for the best part of 30 years a whole series of different things that have to be negotiated. They've negotiated one of about 30. Even if they were able to reach mm. agreement with the European Union, any one nation in the European Union could veto their joining. The French have already said they would have a referendum on that issue. The Germans almost certainly will follow suit. Turkey will not be in the European Union for a very, very long time, if ever, for a whole right. series of practical reasons. And now, the there, Leave there campaign people... know that. There, That's there are, the point. Are, they know okay. that. We were talking about the world after Brexit, if that's what happens. And you'll have seen a whole series of pledges now about 100 million a week for the NHS, about a uh, new uh, an Australian style point system, about new farming subsidies, and much else. Yes. It's beginning to look like another manifesto, isn't it? Well, it's certainly very uh, ill thought out. I mean, the concept that uh, the people running the Brexit campaign would care for the National Health Service is a rather odd one. I seem to remember, Why? well, Michael Gove wanted to privatise it. Boris wanted to charge people for using it. And Ian Duncan Smith wanted a social insurance system. The NHS is about as safe with them as a pet hamster would be with an ank-hungry python. So I don't think that's very wise. As far as, you... uh, as far as immigration is concerned, what they're planning is immensely difficult. There are more people coming into this country from outside the European Union yeah. than inside. Who are the people they're going to send back? The 52,000 doctors in the National Health Service? Doctors right. and nurses? I don't the 80,000 care fair, workers? They're not talking about sending anybody back because well, of the Luxembourg how, agreement how means they, they can how stay. Are they, how are they, we won't be in the European Union yeah. if we leave. How okay. are they going to reduce their numbers? Who are they going to stop coming in? The footballers are enchanters? I think we to, need to, some practical okay. information and we are not getting right. it. Two final people two. are being invited to vote sure. for a pig in a poke. Do you think the Conservative Party is in danger of dividing? Well, we'll have to wait and see. All I can say is that whether the Conservative Party divide or not is one thing we must look at in the future. But that is not as important as the decision that we have to make. This is not about political parties. It's not about the elites. Sure. It's about the everyday man and woman in the street and their children and their grandchildren. It is their future that we will play Russian roulette with if we leave the European my, Union. My last question, given what you've said about Boris Johnson today and in the past, do you think he's fit to be Prime Minister? I'm not making judgments about whether anyone is fit to be Prime Minister. That's a matter for a much wider, uh, a much wider view than mine. It's a matter for the Conservative Party. Ultimately, it's a matter for the whole electorate. So I wouldn't be so impertinent as to have a suggestion either way. I merely say that whether Boris is Prime Minister is no doubt a very important matter to Boris and to many other people. It is less important than the than decision the we vote. have to take in uh, less than three weeks' time. That is crucial. And I must say, if I may put it this way, of all the participants, uh, in the, there is nobody on the Leave side of the campaign who has, as I have, sat at the top table in Europe for seven years. And I know from what I have seen inside the European Union that what they say about unelected elites is absolute hogwash. The Commission, for example, are answerable to David Cameron, Angela Merkel, Francois Hollande and the others. They're appointed for a limited period of time. They're told to produce legislation which then has to be approved by ministers, the European Parliament, the Westminster right. Parliament. The belief an unelected elite is running wild is yet another piece of copper-bottomed leave nonsense.